weeks where Road to Ruta got some really exciting silver news to talk about. Uh, but first, uh, I want to make sure everybody knows I have posted the second Cliff High interview, second of three, at the Road to Ruta site. Um, and I've also posted the third, the big one, um, for the Private Road members and Patreon members. So if you're Private Road to Patreon, go check it out. Uh, but if you're not, go to Road to Ruta, click right here at the top, and Cliff High's in the house. The first interview, Health, Vitality, and Blue Chickens. And the second interview, the Sci-Fi World Secret Tech and the um, Quantum Mandela Effect, which is really interesting. Uh, really, really cool stuff. And then, if you're Patreon or you are Private Road, I have posted Part 3, From 100k Bitcoin to Freedom, to Cryptos Freeing Humanity is a one-hour discussion with Cliff High. You don't want to miss that one. So join the Patreon, join the Private Road, to get access to that. All right, here's the big news in silver today. CFTC today issues two orders filing and settling charges against former precious metals traders at separate financial institutions who entered into formal cooperation agreements with the CFTC's Division of Enforcement and admitted to spoofing and manipulating conducted conduct in the futures market. James McDonald, Director of Enforcement, commented today, Today's enforcement action sends a clear message that spoofing and manipulation in our markets will not be tolerated and that the CFTC will use all tools in its arsenal to aggressively pursue... I can't, it's hard to read this without with a straight face. Aggressively pursue individuals and entities who engage in misconduct. These cases also show that where an individual has demonstrated a commitment to cooperate and has cooperated... The CFTC may elect to postpone the assessment of the cooperator's sanctions until the cooperation is substantially complete. So they were turning their bosses in. And that's the question. Who are their bosses? Here's the two guys. Corey D. Flam. In its order today, settling charges against Corey D. Flam of uh, Mount Crisco, New York, the CFTC found that Flam engaged in a pattern of spoofing in his precious metals futures market, in the precious metals future market between 2007 and 2016, right when all those investigations were going on, complete fraud within the CFTC. All those people need to be put in jail. The order requires Flom to cease and desist from violating Commodities Exchange Act and CFTC regulations prohibiting spoofing the use of manipulated or deceptive devices in connection with futures contracts. The order finds that Flam and others at the bank, and others at the bank, at the banks, he worked at two banks, and I'll tell you who they are, placed futures orders they intended to cancel before execution for the purpose of creating false signals of buying or selling. These spoof orders were placed to deceive other market participants into transacting against orders. Flam and others wanted filmed, at least in part, for the benefit of the bank's this was not just the spoofing. This is just one thing of many things. The order recognizes Flam's entry into a formal cooperation agreement with the division and pursuant to that agreement reserves the CFTC's determination as to sanctions against him. That's Corey Flam, and they don't even say what the bank is, and the same with John Edmonds, although we already know John Edmonds was with J.P. Morgan. In its order today, settling charges against John Edmonds, a book basically says the same thing, but it does not name the bank. But it does say, The order recognizes Edmonds' entry into a formal cooperation agreement with the division, and pursuant to that agreement, reserves CFTC determinations as to sanctions. So this was the whole hoopla about silver investigations. The CFTC kept coming out and said, no, no, there's no such thing as manipulation. They were in the offices of these, these companies and refused, refused to shut the door on the manipulation. It is pathetic for James McDonald to come out and say, oh, yeah, yeah, well, this is how great we are. It's a clear message that spoofing won't be allowed. But, oh, by the way, it was allowed for the last 20 years on purpose. So let's find out. Who we got here? Obviously, J.P. Morgan is involved. Here's a great article back in 2018 when the news first broke. How ex Goldman or J.P. Morgan silver traders' guilty plea could boost manipulation claim against the banks. 
a previously secret guilty plea by a former commodity trader at J.P. Morgan Chase, who admitted that he rigged precious metal markets last week drew the attention of lawyers who are already accused traders at the nation's largest bank in similar conduct. Why was it a secret plea? Why don't they tell the world that J.P. Morgan is rigging the silver market? Why is J.P. Morgan still the trustee of the SLV silver? Why, 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 why? It is pathetic. These regulators are pathetic. The DOJ is pathetic. Now, this is just the CFTC has put the charges down. The DOJ, which is the big charges, are waiting until December. Uh, lawyer David Koval told CNBC he was struck by how much in common his civil defense case pending in New York federal court against J.P. Morgan Chase has with the conduct outlined in the outgoing, the ongoing criminal case in Connecticut against John Edmonds. He admitted working with, quote, unnamed co-conspirators at his former employer, J.P. Morgan, the Justice Department made public on November 6th when it unsealed the U.S. District Court in Connecticut documents. Why were they sealed? Why? Why? J.P. Morgan is part of a huge criminal conspiracy, so they sealed the documents? Yeah. Uh, more from this article, prosecutors said Edmonds learned that it's... Now, this is important. Prosecutors said Edmonds learned the, de the uh, deceptive strategy, quote, from more senior traders at the bank and that he was personally deployed this strategy hundreds of times with the knowledge and consent of his immediate supervisors. Who was his immediate supervisor? Black Masters. She ran the division. His guilty plea related specifically to trading in silver futures contracts as well as the contracts in gold, platinum, and platinum. <laughs> Jeffrey Christian owes the world an apology. And everybody who claimed that we all had tinfoil hats on, they all owe us an apology. All the GATA guys, Ted Butler, even David Morgan said there was manipulation. Although he's more mainstream. He couldn't come out and say it. Although he did many times. This is criminal. This is ridiculous. Who is the second guy? So we know J.P. Morgan. Here's the second guy, Corey D. Flom. Now he's exploring entrepreneurial opportunities in South Florida. <laughs> but what happened to his big title is J.P. Morgan uh, or some bank. They didn't say the bank. Metals trader. Huge metals trader. Well, here's where he ended up. The equity derivatives at Delta One after he got fired from that big bank. I don't care about that. Let's, here's what we do care about. Aha. He was the director of precious metals trading at Bank of Nova Scotia, Scotia Makata, the other criminal silver rigger, along with J.P. Morgan, Citibank, and Deutsche Bank. Those are the big mothers. And look where he was before 2008. Bear Stearns, of course, where he managed to screw up the silver short position, the monster that it inherited from AIG, from Drexel Burnham, according to Ted Butler, who's absolutely right. And now it resides at J.P. Morgan. It is the, the crypto, it is the silver and gold cabal. The club, as Snippy likes to call them. These two companies, along with J.P. Morgan, Bank of Nova Scotia, Bear Stearns went down. Now, go back, see how many people were rigging the silver market, holding that silver hot potato that went down. Drexel Burnham went down. AIG went down. Bear Stearns went down. Who has it now? J.P. Morgan. Under investigation. They will go down as well. Stop rigging the silver market and you'll, you'll maintain your company's standing in the world. My God. And if anybody wants to know about silver manipulation, just go to RoadToRoot.com, type in silver manipulation. I got articles of calling out Blythe Masters, you know, the classic... When she sat there at the uh, on uh, was it CNBC? Listen, listen to what she says at two thirty. Let's see. Let me see if I can bring this up. Morgan's commodity performance in twenty and in metals and in oil, but across the board in all facets, that's what you're investing in. A lot of 
concern has been placed, though, about J.P. Morgan's, particularly its positions in the metal space, mm -hmm. and looking at your positions in silver. We talked earlier about the volatility in the silver market. Can you talk about J.P. Morgan's positions and price volatility, and how are they related? Yeah, that's a great question, and you're right that there's been a tremendous amount of uh, speculation, uh, particularly in the blogosphere, about uh, this topic. And I think the, uh, the challenge is uh, that that speculation represents a misunderstanding as to the nature uh, of our business. As I mentioned earlier, our business is a client-driven uh, business uh, where we execute on behalf of clients to achieve their financial and risk management objectives. Uh, the challenge is that uh, commentators don't see all of that activity simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So just... So we don't see the market rigging, the spoofing simultaneously. To give you a simple example, uh, we store significant amounts of commodities, for example, silver, yeah. uh, on behalf of customers. We operate vaults in New York City, in Singapore, and in London. Now, London is where they store the SLV. Why would they be hedging SLV silver? Those people who have silver in SLV, did you know that J.P. Morgan was running around playing derivative games with your silver? Uh, and often when uh, customers have that metal stored in our facilities, they hedge it on a forward basis through J.P. Morgan, uh, who in turn hedges itself in the commodity market. So they're double hedging, basically. <laughs> if you see only the hedges mm -hmm. and our activity in the futures market, but you aren't aware of the underlying client position that we're hedging, then it would suggest inaccurately that we're running a large directional position. Yes. In fact, that's not the case at all. We have offsetting positions. We have no stake in whether prices rise or decline. Rather, we're running a flat or a relatively matched. So it's not it's because what is commonly out there is that JP Morgan is manipulating the metals market. And from what you're outlining, that is not possible because of the different sides of the business that you're a part of. That's right. It's not part of our business model. Uh, it would be wrong and we don't do it. It would be wrong, and you did it, and you did it, and now you're busted. That little smug smile pisses me off. If you want more on the silver manipulation scam, it's been going on for 20 years at least. We all know longer than that. I've been, I've been exposing it for 20 years. So as Ted Butler and a lot of people, my friends at GATA, Go to go to Road to I got a good article called, called Operation Silver Slam when they brought the price of silver up from twenty dollars to fifty dollars and slammed it down to destroy sentiment. They said the same thing with the cryptos, use the same tactics. It's all a game, it's all criminality. But this biatch is going to jail. She left her crypto company. The 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 painting of her is just a classic. Now this was painted in France during the during the 2008 crash, and that was all caused by credit default swaps, which she was the major, the number one person promoting those to the tune of, uh, what was it, $50 billion bailout needed or something to that effect, $50 trillion. It was so big, it was ridiculous, but Blythe Masters was the person in charge. As soon as that debacle was kind of papered over, they moved her directly to gold and silver manipulation with derivatives. She belongs in jail. She should rot in jail. And I think that's what's happening sooner rather than later. So ultimate conclusion, go buy as much physical silver as you can and sit on your silver throne and watch Blythe Masters get dragged in front of the media. It's going to be a good one. Big Square, RoadToRoad.com. Talk to you later.